Ascension Pioneers and all you lovers of galactic updates. <laughs> Welcome to this video with me. We are in such a rapid acceleration time and though we are, there's also this intense slowing down that I have reported about in my Ascension update for the month of December. So if you haven't watched that video, please do so because this video, this galactic update will go a little deeper into the matter of what's really happening at this time. So I wanted to give you again a short recap of my current work and devotion. As you know, and as I've shared with you, I won't be doing so many videos in December because I've made a lot of free courses that are available on my profile, Ascension Pioneers YouTube channel. But I'm currently focusing on this channeling of information and synthesis that will be a part of my universal or cosmic ascension and union universal consciousness course that is the 12th initiation in the meantime you can still take the galactic human embodiment course which is the 11th initiation it also has a beautiful light activation uh, during this whole course because in each course i give you a little bit of the theory then we go through the embodiment stages you know things of application and then i always give you a light activation to activate and a part of the galactic human embodiment course is this activation of the galactic council and the principle of embodying the energy of being the conduit for the light of the Galactic Council and different regional or how to call them councils of light that in a way are a structure, a structure modality, how light is being infused into this planet. So the first thing I want to say in this video today is that if you've been here and uh, here in the Alps, but I'm sure wherever you are in the world, it's happening much the same. There's been such a tremendous shift in energy while well, weather patterns, as you know, weather directly reflects the energy. So we've had like such a winter or December that we never had before because I remember since moving here a few winters, December was mostly dry, you know, not always, but there was this tendency for the snow to come a little later and winters were cold but dry. And now we had so many snowfalls already and what took place during this current gateway, because I'm recording this on 12 to 12, which is a mini portal of light every year that follows the 11-11 portal. And it's kind of the integration point, the synthesis that takes us on the journey all throughout these most important days, which are from the 12th of 12 till 21st of 12, which is the solstice point. So this is the lowest point in the Northern Hemisphere where the sun um, as the star that reflects the light that comes from the galactic center um, comes at, right? So the point here is that there is kind of like a slowing down until the Christmas point, which is actually the solar infusion where the sun and the Northern Hemisphere starts to rise up again. So this is a very deeply inner time, inward focused time. This is a time of introspection. This is a time of going inward, not just because this relates to you and your personal life and what you're here to integrate as a part of your personal journey, because also as a collective part, as the part we're playing, these microcosmic parts within the whole and contributing to the light um, process that's taking place on much bigger scale of things okay so this especially from today which is 12th of 12 till 21st of 12 is a point of receiving the information from within we're being informed by the light from within we are getting new inspirational points we're being triggered we're being informed by light i made a, a spirit guidance because i do these weekly messages and the way i'm going to do them from new year's time on starting from january it's going to be different and i'm considering doing this new video content i don't know yet how um but it's going to be more channeled it's going to be uh, you know because i type these messages and i'm being shown that what is important is to bring through the energy as this is directly happening it's going to be more 
uh, based in that way, but I haven't yet fully culminated in that because I never received guidance fully, like it's sealed the deal before I finish up the things I need to do first. So this is the work I'm doing now on the Universal Consciousness and the Cosmic Union course, which is going to be the last one of the Self Mastery series. So those of you who haven't been participating, but you had it pulled towards it, you know, these courses will always be there, always available because your soul calls you to that when you're ready. And sometimes people ask me, which course should I start with? Because you have so many. Well, I don't have a universal answer for that just go with what feels right for you but I've explained many times that the courses go from basic seven initiations into self mastery and then they slowly progress towards greater advanced levels and then there's also multi-dimensional courses that are more, more focused on what is you know what follows beyond the veil of just our personal mastery and that starts with the Galactic Human Embodiment course which is a part of the mastery series as well so it's the 11th initiation but what is also important to note here is that I also have, and I'm going to talk about this today because it's kind of in alignment with the topic today. Um, there's this galactic heritage or the galactic signature course and galactic consciousness, which is a separate part in my, on my page. And it focuses more on how you, as a unique unit of source, of translating the light of source, how you get to know yourself through stellar archetypes and your divine signatures within the blueprint that is your star map and how to learn to read that. So we're going to talk today about these shifts and it's very important. It's becoming increasingly important for us to be aware of these things. So how we channel energy specifically. So when these more um, galactic shifts occur, when the outer planets that are being, of course, influenced by even greater cycles. When they start to shift in signs, which is the shift from one archetype embodiment to the next one, how we personally, from within our own star map point, are, you know, kind of like assessing those energies. How are we translating them now? Because the way we used to translate energy from a certain archetype point, then the way we're asked to do it then from the next vantage point shifts. And that's why it's so good to know your basic galactic signature or know how to read your own star map, which is not just the astrological associations, but it's more based also on the certain degrees and the codes that are written within your own language that you've placed within your chart. And the chart, when we call this astrological chart, is only a reference point from your origin here on earth <clears throat> so let's say that why is our conscious embodiment so important is because we're not just focused up in the stars right we say well our roots or our origin is as a galactic nature and beyond and we're star beings you know first be before becoming these planetary embodied beings but the thing is that on the planetary consciousness level, we get to experience things that then later go into the whole. They feed in the collective informational system that becomes eventually the formation of the Star Council. And I've talked about this before. So taking the Galactic Human Embodiment course is very important to understand this and why this type of consciousness kind of gets you to this next level of your integration. So when we become aware of this, we're, we're much more conscious in how we participate with life because life becomes less of a personal need and requirement, but more as an offering. You will be more feeling yourself as a, you're, walk, you're a walking channel, you're a walking contribution to the whole. And that was the main point of my videos to kind of help you to transcend your personal needs, desires, wants, what you expect, what you think is going to happen <laughs> into the more, how can I anchor energy the way I'm supposed to because it's my divine birthright and destiny. And once I align with that, the flow of life force naturally guides me in that direction. Because there is a difference of, you know, we say, well, surrender is being passive. No, conscious surrender is the feeling of the pull of life force. And that is why I created the life force mastery course called the Tantrica because it helps you to pinpoint that, to align with the natural pulsation of the beat of life, how you kind of respond to that, how life is informing itself through you and bringing the consciousness into this physical form. So why a conscious embodied grounded form is so important because elsewhere we can't really connect to these galactic roots. We can't really bring them down here. And that was the main point of embodiment, was to bring the infusion of the highest light and the higher realms and bring it to an aspect that we would call physical, and yet it would be an illumined physical aspect. So that was always the main initiative, the main drive behind 
the process of embodiment, what we call an incarnation. And then, as you know, reincarnation happened and a lot of repetition and recycling of energy, which got a lot of souls to where they wouldn't really want to be because it's the repetition that really is a stagnant energy. So there is a huge difference between being passive or stagnant or non-responsive to life and co-creative with life, but in a surrendered way. Because the majority of the human populace, as you know, is still in control. And what's happening now is because these shifts of energy, when we're aligning with, as you know, we're in the photon belt knife for now for since 2012, it's really the whole of the system, we're in it, in our solar system. So it's just getting deeper and deeper. And as we're kind of traversing through and we're traveling through, we're going to experience those different waves of energy, like different pulsations, and we're going to start creating new responses to them, as you know. And these things that we're experiencing in our personal day-to-day -day life are initiatives to what really wants to shift through us. So which levels we need to surrender into because remember habitual patterning is the, the drive that tells you this is the way I do things and it becomes static. So that is in a way kind of that energy which doesn't pr produce different results because it's revolving around the same and same and all until it shifts, you know, from the bottom of the core of where it truly originates from. So the way we used to do things, and now because the energy is so deeply penetrating our solar system and our planet, we're going to feel a quickened response to what's aligned and what isn't. And you may notice this at this time, what's happening is that, and I've noticed this myself, I don't necessarily need to think about doing something and I'm feeling these contractions within my belly and it gets strong. I'm like, what is this? What's happening? And it's, I've been shown through spirit that our bodies, the way they were informed, you know, for eons and eons of time, they needed to develop the kind of mechanism that gets you to push through that we had that written in our DNA of our physical bodies was this program of, you know, survival of the fittest, push through, you know, causing this push and push and push. So now with the energy, which, you know, in a way that was required for that time, but because the main theme the over theme or the overture, right? If you know the great symphonies and how they're written, there's a great overture that is the essence of the entire melodies that are playing as a result of, you know, the coagulation of energy and, you know, this fusion of different songs and how they're coalescing. So what's happening is that this overture is shifting and we're doing that partially through this gradual, you know, it's like you know, getting to know these archetypes that are moving us to, a different way of knowing ourselves and this this is what's been happening for years now but if you're becoming more conscious of your body it means you're having an established sense of firm roots in the stars so the idea behind the new ageism hard <laughs> to call it like that is moving upwards 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 without integration of hello you know we need to bring that light into the suppressed collective or the suppressed shadow or that which was unacknowledged or it was acknowledged in a way that now no longer serves us. So that was the main point. So now with so much coming to the light, we're feeling these extremes of energy. So that means whenever something is off, it's going to either be fully aligned or fully off. Because it's in a way what I'm feeling is what I'm being shown right now as I speak. Because that's what I do. I sit down and I don't always know what I'm going to say. And then it just starts to pour through. That is what it means to be a liquid light channel. You don't always know what you're going to get, but you have to be in this full surrendered state of trust that what you get needs to be in the surrendered form without needing too much to control it. So as you know, I used to have these notes and the notes were, okay, I can't forget to mention this because then I end the video and I'm like, oh, I forgot to add that. Well, how do I put that in another video segment? So that was the main focus. But right now, the energy shifting so much that even the slightest things can cause us to feel misaligned because they might hold little tidbits of the old or the old way of how we inform ourselves or we think we need to inform ourselves. So there is still this, um, what I was shown, the bodies hold so much of this tightening grip. And because of that, the energy wants to loosen us up. There's either full alignment or a complete misalignment. And, you know, if you have something wrong with your body, the body will now fully show you because the energy is not so much suppressed. You know, people who have cancer, they say, well, it just suddenly happened. I just suddenly, you know, got this diagnosis. Well, that was lurking in the, you know, in, in the uh, suppressed aspects for a very long time. We just weren't aware of it. That, you know, the in the bodily form, 
before and we weren't aware of it. But the subconscious held um, these programs for quite a while before we consciously became aware of it. But what's happening now is it's almost like the lag time is getting to the zero point, which is if something is off, even slightly, we're getting this, ooh, something is really weird. So the body, you know, this, um, whenever these new changes start to happen, we get cosmic waves all the time, as you know. So there's different energies. It's not just the uh, our sun acting through the informational process of solar flares, right, that become coronal, there are coronal mass ejections, right, CMEs. Um, but there's also other parts of the process because in a way this process, we know this as, you know, if you kind of know physics or astrophysics or, you know, any kind of physics, there's always this boxing of different phenomena. But when you get to the point of galactic consciousness, you know that this phenomena is all connected. It's not this phenomena versus that phenomena. It's just one phenomena. So in a way, when you become a cosmologist, you don't have to, you know, there's no staple, you know, something or marker that tells you, well, you are a cosmologist because it's so abstract in a way. It's the study of the way of life as it moves through different forms of density. And it's kind of like, how do you study that? Well, you might have discoveries on a certain level of consciousness and our consciousness shifts. Well, the discoveries change, right? So it's something so archetypal. This universe is archetypal. And we're moving through those different archetypes. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. And we're getting to know different aspects of how we may respond to energy and reverberate our own unique essence by getting to know more of, of our core self and then respond by different ways of interacting with the energy that we would reference as, as we're moving into the life of creation as that which comes and meets us in opposition or something that comes outside of us. Well, in truth, the alchemy is any energy infusion is an intermingling process from within. So even if something opposes us seemingly, right, or comes as a side of us, is an, an alchemical reaction first takes place where these different resonances come together and start to create the blending process. So, whew, so much said. I want to say that lately there was just so much of this energy coming through and it was really intense. You know, for me, I had to take a few days off and I was just observing the changes in my body and I was just resting a lot more than I usually do. And it's not like my body would allow me to do anything else. And what started to happen energy-wise, um, weather-wise, was we had snow and then snow again. And what happened during the 12-12 portal, uh, usually when these portals starts to, uh, the energy starts to get active, um, we're going to have a lot of electric energy because the universe is electric universe. There is a process of information taking place within every aspect of the universe. Um, so uh, planets are not singular entities. Stars are not, you know, they just have their own job and, and that's it. It's also interconnected and intertwined. And the experiences we're having on our personal levels are getting us more and more aware of how everything is just one process of source, it, this grand play. And there is no this phenomena versus that one. If we have that phenomena, well, that kind of pulls together the energy of, of different phenomena together. So you, you start to observe that and you start to get informed and you start to open your eyes and see the bigger picture. So in the past, right, you used to perhaps read the news and you got the weather report and you said, well, the weather is such and such and you went out and it really was such and such. Now we're being so interactive with the weather because we know we're influencing it through our consciousness because our consciousness is expanding. So you're looking at the weather forecast and you're looking at something and you're like, mm, I wish it was more like this or that happens and it shifts. And as you're already watching and observing, it's already shifting. So we're noticing these things. And I just, I was just so awestricken because I was looking outside and we had snow like this and the next moment rain comes and we had two days of pouring rain over all, over all that beautiful crispy snow and it's all just washed away and then there was ice and then there was wind it was like tornado it was I was like what's happening and it was it was truly intense and whenever there's these gateways that open and when I started doing the weekly guidance as I always do Cards were just flying out, and usually it doesn't happen this way. And everybody was just falling out, and I was laughing. I was like, 
all the cards are falling out. What's the energy is really intense when that happens. And it's just like someone is ripping them out of my hands. And all the cards were like this new opening, new wave energy, um, gateway. It was just intense. So when I do that, it's really felt. And I was guided just recently to not focus so much on words because words can hardly transcribe the energies as is happening in the real time. But I wanted to do this video anyway to kind of bring you this overall of what's really important to take note of at this time because this is, whether you're aware of it or not, this is a, such an important time. As you know, every year around this time, not just that we, we celebrate so many New Year's, right? We have, we usually have the New Year, right? January 1st, but that's just, you know, numerologically kind of wise. <laughs> so it's a numerology um, based New Year. But before that, we have the solstice, which is the truest New Year in terms of our solar cycles for us here in the Northern Hemisphere. And um, it's kind of like the, the ending of the year and then the new one begins. And it happens with the Christmas, right? So Christmas, as you know, in the many ancient traditions, it was celebrated as such as the rising of the sun. And then we have the January 1st, which is the calendar-based or numerology-based new year. But there's also the new moon that initiates this. It's usually the new moon in Sagittarius. But... The Sagittarius, as you know it, is the archetype of our expansion, and it's the spiritual teacher. It's that which we need to illuminate to start walking a little, you know, kind of like the moderation path. And even in uh, tarot uh, cards or the tarot major arcana, the number 14, which is the moderation card or the temperance, is the Sagittarius-based card. So this is kind of like how do we master polarities by getting aligned with our core, this spiritual core, which is unique for every one of us. So it is no surprise that this year, the new one in Sagittarius, which is, I think, December 18th, depends on where you are, but I think that's the main date. It occurs exactly at 26 degrees of Sagittarius, which if you're aware, or if you if you've taken my galactic um, signature or heritage um, course, you know by now that this is the degrees, this is the degree of the galactic center because not just the degrees, because 25, 26, 27 are kind of like the pinpoint of the galactic degrees, but specifically in Sagittarius, that's where our galactic center is. And the galactic center center is the, the origin of life here in this particular galaxy. And it's the birthing point. And we always reference this as, well, it's, it's the dark hole or the black hole, right? That rests in the middle. But the scientists weren't you know, able to fully pinpoint it because they said, well, it's invisible. <laughs> That's what it is. So there was many theories based around it. And yet when you see pictures of it, there's just like massive amount of light. And it's like slowly starts to spread out. And we say, wow, we get this beautiful Milky Way galaxy and Earth is kind of in the fringes of it. Um, but what this means is that the point of the galactic center is the point that informs us most directly without the seeming, seemingly experienced archetypes that we do, right, through our main personal astrology and a planetary-based astrology and so on. This is the direct informational infusion that comes from the pulse of light, as I call it. And if you want to learn more, get the Life Force Mastery course called the Tantrica because you will learn how to channel this energy directly through conscious um, birthing within yourself. There's actually two courses within one. So this new birth that we're experiencing, each and every one of us now will be informed in a new way. So for us, this, for me, this year, I'm showing this is kind of like the biggest new year we can experience. It's, it's, it's this time between the 12th, 12th, this mini gate gateway we're experiencing today as I'm recording this. And we had, like I said, we had literally little whirlpools of energy, whirlpools. <laughs> and it's, it was so beautiful to watch. Let me tell you why. Because we had just this freshly fallen crispy snow that was on the trees. And as this wind began, this was on Sunday. And today is Tuesday. This is when the energy started to uh, seed, right? It started to anchor itself. And I was shown the archetype of the anchor, right? Almost like in the ship. Because, you know, they put the anchor in. And usually when they pull it back out, 
the anchor kind of has seaweed and all the different remnants of different things on it. So that's why so many times when this anchoring process happens, when you yourself as an embodiment, as a channel of light, especially for volunteer souls, because we're so attuned to this process and, and with the crystalline grid, why we're so sensitive, we're feeling this because we're almost feeling like all that murky thing, you know, all that stuff is coming to the surface. So this will kind of give us the feeling of this pull you know it's like something pulls you down and you feel heavier and you feel tired or even fatigued um, it's because of this process so it was literally shown this kind of this anchor um, so on Sunday this started to anchor and it was so beautiful to watch because just before we had freshly crisp you know that dry snow and when the wind began it was like it was dancing and you could literally see the whirlpool of energy so that's why I call it a, a snow tornado and what happened is I went for a run and I usually don't do it anymore now at this time but somehow I really wanted to go a little up the hill and as I was returning it was so intense that little bits and pieces of that snow it was like icy crystals fell into my eye and I couldn't see for one day I was like wow half blinded and it's slowly starting to get better but it was really a message of, you know, now is really not this outward moving time with the energy. But what's also so important is, as, you, as you've seen the first Ascension update for this month, is Mercury is also in retrograde in Sagittarius. So these are slowing downs of energy that kind of anchor us within ourselves. And what I felt myself was a lot of identity dissolution and the message I got from spirit was what we call identity crisis as humans is not really a crisis is a is a point of transcendence it's a point of transgressing that and moving somewhere else you know in the higher octave point so it's like you're expanding from the core and again and again and it's this constant birth but we feel this in between periods sometimes as a death of this uh, kind of like um certain archetype you played in your life but that role now no longer suits you and it's it becomes what was once fruitful it becomes a false pattern or an illusion or just a falsehood that no longer resonates so I got this message of we're really dissolving it's like almost anything and remember a while back I've shared that I had this in-between sleep state uh, message from the family of light and they said oh, we need to prepare for what's coming next that the body itself is going to be informed in a new way. And I think this is it because the Sagittarius is also the principle of the body. Um, as you know, it relates to, um, if you read the mythology of it, it really is connected to our physical bodies as well. Um, and for me personally, I have ascendant in, you know, Sagittarius, which is, 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 is how I'm informed and how I react with the physical world. Um, so this is very important. So we're going to be, each and every one of us informed through this new birth that comes directly from the galactic core. I really advise you to take that day to meditate, to reflect, to just be with yourself, to, to not create too much of distraction. And, you know, anything can wait at this time because it's kind of like the personal galactic new year for us. So how you will receive this energy, of course, depends on your chart. And if you want to learn how to read in terms of degrees and these archetypes you can still study through my galactic heritage and there's also galactic consciousness course these two are paired together as well so you can get them both together as one um, but what is also important is that simultaneously almost i think just a few days apart is that saturn which is the ruler of we call it the lord of time and karma and the cycles of life that we experience as karmic cycles it's moving into Capricorn. It's moving from Sagittarius. So for me, it's kind of a challenge because I have Ascendant in Sagittarius, which was for me now these, I think it's around three years that this um, archetype is being explored through Saturn. It's how much it stays in one sign, three and a half to three years. And now it's moving into Capricorn, which is for me just the same. It's also moon. It's my moon and it's in the first house. So it's <laughs> both together. And... Um, this will be very intense, but what I've actually channeled from spirit was that for all those of us, this energy we're going to explore in the next, let's say, three years overall will be very um, easy and in flow for those of you who've done the inner alignment work. Because the work we've been doing so far where, where Saturn was in Sagittarius was the work of expansion. So we're, I explained in my last union video, we kind of went 
we kind of went overboard, right? Went to the to the maximum degree of this expansion that we were called to do in this cycle that our souls have chosen for us. And our Capricorn is it's the wise sage, it's the wisdom, is you know the Capricorn is the mountain goat or the the sea goat that goes. And it implements by walking the mountain. So now it's walking the talk. Now it's integrating this expansion with experience, the Saturn, which rules our cycles of, of the overall collective energy karma that we're experiencing, of course, individually in our own way is how much we've developed and mastered ourselves. But it's still in a way we still feel the collective. We're not separate from it, right? We are one and yet we're a part of the bigger picture. So that's the main lesson here is how will we integrate the Capricorn energy in the next few years? And that comes now by, we're going to be informed through the galactic center of this new birth. So how this will be for us, because this almost is conjunct together. It happens in just a few days apart or two days or something. Um, and we already know that Jupiter moved in Scorpio not a long time ago. So Scorpio gave us this message that we will go deeper as ever before. And Scorpio is an archetype at the higher level. It's the archetype of union, which is the alchemical marriage. It's the sacred marriage or the Heros Gamos. Um, so this is going to be for me what I feel 2018, such an intense year. We're going to start a new cycle. So this is a new galactic cycle. New cycle begins. And I'm telling you, be careful or attentive from the 12th, 12th, which is today, to the 21st, which is the solstice, and of course, moving on. But the main point will be around the Sagittarius 26 degrees, this galactic center alignment, new moon, because new moons are initiatives. New moons tell us how to implement that in our physical life. We get messages, we get surges of energy. And in my reading, which was the weekly guidance, there was a lot of Uranus energy. And Uranus is that lightning bolt. And of course, today at 1212, 12, early in the morning, we had lightnings here. It was a part of this intense rainfall and I think snowfall in the mountains. So this is really coming and it's coming at the forefront. So if you've been in a way feeling, oh, I wasn't fully aware what to do next. You, you were in this in-between state this stage we were in needing to experience for what's coming next. And sometimes when we say, well, we don't know what to do next, I'm confused. You're not confused. You're in the incubation period. That's what I've received from spirit. This was for many of us. Um, so we're being informed through the galactic core and new cycle is born. So if you're a guided, you can study through the galactic consciousness or the galactic heritage course. This is on my page called the galactic signature. And what is really important now to do at this time to integrate or to prepare how to integrate the Capricorn energy, those of us who have a lot of Capricorn in our chart, it doesn't have to be like many personal planetary positions. For me, it's enough just because my moon is in Capricorn and the moon is such an important planet. Um, it's not a planet, but you know, it's a positioning in the chart because the moon is your inner self through um, the emotional, the, the feminine, the how you're integrating this uh, energy through your embodied wisdom and for me personally I really know this Capricorn energy it's been with me all my life and for me the highest aspect of Capricorn is devotion and it's through this devotion comes integrity because what you devote to builds integrity within you because people who do not know how to devote to something who can't find a higher cause in life they're always going to be kind of moving from one thing to the next it's like scattered energy but the capricorn although it can be challenging it can be hard working energy but it's that persistence of a mountain goat that keeps you going and it keeps striving for you know whatever it's that aimless aim which is in truth that focus so I want to talk about archetypal universe through the Capricorn archetype because that's just, of course, one of them. But because Saturn is such an important planet for our collective consciousness, this Capricorn energy is like we're already starting to feel it now. And it's not like that fast results, right? Many people or astrologers say, wow, Jupiter is the planet of luck. It brings fortune and it's sometimes it's, it's sudden and it's unanticipated or it's like a divine reward or a divine intervention because it's such a glorious energy. You know, Jupiter in a way was, was almost a star, but we as a collective, we didn't know how to tip it off in that kind of way. So it was decided that it stays as it is. Um, it's kind of on itself. It's too small to become, you know, it doesn't have um, much as much mass for that process as of yet. Um, but it's been prophesied also that when we progress in consciousness, 
and that was in some of the books I remember reading, that we will be able to do that and to tip it off so it becomes a star in itself. <laughs> so what's important is that the difference between Jupiter and Saturn, how they inform you, how they inform us is that Saturn is, is kind of like that slow, steady process where you, your main aim is devotion, not the aim itself it's not the goal itself but that you are aligned through your devotion and that's the main principle of all those who become spiritual um, initi initiatives right people who become initiated into the pathway of spirit through that devotion that keeps them in that main integrity alignment which sometimes you know something out of the physical world comes and it wants to tempt you in another position and if you're not in integrity if you're not aligned if you don't know the core of who you are and why you are here you might be quickly you know, misguided or misled, or, you know, you just take it down a uh, round tour. It's, it's not like it's bad. It just becomes an experience that perhaps you need, otherwise you wouldn't choose it. So in a way, these experiences are all important. But that Capricorn energy, how I experience it and how I see it in terms of the larger picture, is that which helps us to build the root of our spiritual foundation. Because it's one sign, as you know it, in, in our archetypal uh, zodiac that follows Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is the natural law. It's the natural way of how you live. Your radiant expand itself, and that just keeps you on expanding and expanding. Well, the Capricorn is also, well, we also need rules, directives, regulations, because it's ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is also about the principles of um, you know, it's also natural law, but it's also natural law that, you know, as with Jupiter, it's more like unrestricted. It's constant expansion. Saturn also poses certain uh, rules and limitations because they are also required for us to develop our inner stamina and develop the kind of nature that, uh, in a way, in the end, we become... Uh, how to call this is is the in, intouchables the in, invincibles invincibles i don't know how to call it but it's it's really that devotion that when you are devoted nothing in the external world can you know it's kind of can come at you and create a different result than what you feel from within you even though there's things or temptations coming temporarily it's really just you stay, you know, aligned with that core. So one of the Capricorn archetypes or, you know, devotion, which births discipline. And discipline is not the same as control. A lot of people, you know, misplace that and think, well, discipline is really something heavy because you have to be there and do that. And it's always, um, you know, discipline and truth. When it's true discipline, it's self-initiative. It's, it's self-initiative. You yourself instigate it. It's not that an external authority tells you you need to be disciplined. You know, that's really not what true discipline and the spiritual masters is all about. Control, when, when our egos try to control the processes, it's actually on the contrary because it doesn't produce the kind of natural alignment that that devotion, that truly births discipline does. So the natural law through integrity, which sometimes will impose limitations as well. Um, and it's important. It's almost like, if you exist within a boundless state as a human, you know, you never learn that your actions might have certain reactions elsewhere and, and other people. You will not learn the boundaries. So boundaries kind of come into play when we're experiencing the human realm. Also, like I said, it's the Lord of Karma and time, responsibility and transcendence through that sense of greater responsibility than just responsibility for your daily tasks, your daily work your people you, in your relationships is more personal for you um, but whenever this more external planets and more external planets begin with jupiter so jupiter well, i don't know jupiter is somehow in between being a personal and yet it's not it's not such a personal planet um, representation but it's it's kind of it more falls into alignment of these uh, transpersonal planets it depends how you view it but from the natural kind of intelligence within you, it shows you that its duration, right? Its durations are, you know, and the phases are longer than the yearly cycles of the sun, right? Which is 365 days around, you know, <laughs> itself. So we have personal planets or the moon lunations, right? They kind of require less time. So we have many different cycles that uh, interact within themselves with each other too, right? Because they create different astrological alignments. But when it comes to trans 
personal planets, they have larger cycles. And the more outer planets they become, as you know, they, they birth longer spans, right, of time. So I want to give you this sketch, <laughs> which is kind of like a very, very childish, <laughs> childlike. But the galactic core here, right? If we, if we imagine this pulse that, in a way, is a natural, it's like a natural control of everything that is a part that emanated from it, from the first place, then the alignment with that brings us into the alignment of the consciousness that our lives, everything that's a part of our life is governed through this principle of the pulse of life. So when we awaken that part of our consciousness, the control aspect slowly starts to dissolve. And different personas that we kind of play in our life, right? We say, well, I'm this, I'm the guide, I'm the guru, I'm the teacher, I'm the student, I'm the master. Um, I'm a life coach, I'm a trainer, I'm an astrologer, you know, I'm a beauty queen, I'm whatever it is. These are, everything we do from that reference point in our human level, in a way, will be self, self-entitlement. But when we go through natural archetypes that are part of the natural law, um, the entitlements will shift, they will change, because the only nature of truth is that change when it comes to the external world. So when we're exploring, when we're, we're a natural organic being, when we just explore certain archetypes and you tune into it and oh, you decide, oh, I want to play in this. I want to be a dancer. I want to experience the energy essence of what it means to be a dancer. But I've explained to you many times before, then taking that and applying it as a role, a structure in a rigid way, it will kind of hinder the other aspects too that perhaps in parallel, you also want to play with an experience. So to have a mature approach to this, and Capricorn is all about spiritual maturity, because that's what you need if you want to get to the advancement of the next cycles, which is the Aquarius, and you know we're moving into the Aquarian age, and then the Pisces, which is complete transcendence, and um, it's the aspect of many higher beings and higher realms that already are in the existence of not needing form in such a way. But Earth does because earth lies in the kind of region of this galaxy that provides the template required for the experience of physicality so that light can be experienced in such a way that's not perhaps in other worlds that are dimensional in a different way so the galactic core is that pulse of light that informs everything that is a part of it so when we look at the nature of the core self it kind of aligns with that being informed through the pulse of life and if you're going to be a part of the galactic um, signature or heritage course you can see where your natural placement and alignment of galactic core comes in your chart so for me it's very neptunian i have uh, neptune in galactic core degrees so this higher spirituality, higher love, that comes very natural to me. So it's just a translation of something I don't need to learn. So that's the galactic core is something that's not learned. It's not informational through uh, lesser archetypes, but it's that core. It's something that it just is. You can't explain. I, I've got this gift by studying this and that. It's, you know, um, it's something you can't explain. It, it's just there because it's informed through galactic core. That's the easiest way for me to explain it. So the dimensional spaces that are represented through these stars or the stellar archetypes, if you haven't known this yet, stars are actually rotational objects that we're learned, right? We're being taught that stars use their own mass to eject light, you know, and shine bright or whatever. But it's not the whole picture. As you know, the part of the electric universe, and if you haven't heard that, watch some of the beautiful documentaries about the nature of the electric universe and how stars are actually objects that are connected they're they're being informed through the galactic pulse just the same way and their nature their purpose is to kind of like distribute that light in a proper way and how they harness that and there's different versions of stars you probably also heard of the neutron star which is so dense that it's been so fast right that its pulsations is i don't know i don't know the number now <laughs> 300 um, kilometers per second. I don't know. I, I just know it's super fast. So stars are related directly to dimensional spaces and they create that through being in a certain regions of the galactic space. And it, wherever they are in this galactic space, that's kind of how they create, how dimensional spaces are created. So the life we experience it here on Earth is not the same as life on some planet around, I don't know, star cluster of Pleiades. 
is different. The whole dimensional structure is different. So when we as earthlings look for the life outside of our planetary system, we can't find it because we're always looking for the life that's in our dimension and our ways, but we forget to employ this concept of dimensional spaces. So when we come to the planets and how planets interact, they also rotate, but they rotate around these stars. So they actually rotate together and it's all being informed through the galactic core. So remember that the primary information comes from the source light and how it's then distributed comes from many different archetypes that are part of the um, archetypal spaces or dimensional spaces and these spaces then inform the life that becomes the planes of being on different planets and planets also rotate and if you want to learn more about this it's all in the galactic consciousness course if you want to be more you know expanded in the way that you perceive our life here and the life in the universe at large so these rotational cycles of the planet, of the planets, are of, of course um, directly linked with the stars and their cycles. So when there's, you know, this cycle has its own rotational dynamics, and this one has, and at a certain point, they, as you know, we call them celestial alignments from our Earth vantage point. Because remember, I said before, embodiment on Earth is one of the most important things to become rooted on the planet because. Just as the source of the whole of the universe is in every cell of your body, it's also the cell that our planet is in reference to other planets. So it's a part of the overall Akasha. It's in our planetary living library. And that means you can connect to your core self. You connect to the library of the planet. You can, through your universal consciousness, you can align to anything you want to in terms of reference in time and space. So this means that because they are informed in their way, they create different um, rotations or they kind of like uh, beam light outwards. But because of that, at certain times through certain alignments that, you know, take place from the realm vantage point, which is from the planetary vantage point, they create certain locking positions. And when these happen, we, we say, well, there's, there's a gateway open or this open, right? So this we say a stellar gateway. And these gateways help to unlock gateways that are held within the structure of our planets so they can align cosmically more to um, different streams of energy that perhaps weren't here before. And I've mentioned before that the work that the planetary servers of light as volunteer souls have here is in the majority they help to serve to open up these cosmic gateways through the work they do with the crystalline uh, grid of the planet. Um, so when knowing our own cycles, when you learn your own self, your astrology, you are the living organism, the, the you know, the microorganism within the greater macro sphere of being, you are getting to know your own dynamics, your own astrology, how that influences you. But at a certain point of transcendence, that becomes no longer so important for you. It is really important. It is. But once you start to see that you are in alignment with these greater cycles, it's going to be more important how that influences you so you can become a greater channel for light, how you can infuse it and distribute it in your own way. So you become, by this consciousness, that means you activate your stellar consciousness, you become like the star, except you, your aspect in creation is to be a human being. And you're the one that walks on the planet and you talk and you do things and you can create. So you're not just radiating, you're not just a star that rotates. But in your own way, you start to harness the energy of a star in a human form. Again, it's it's really hard to explain, but these rotational cycles of the planets, remember, they are interlinked with the cycles and the lock-in phases that create gateways that certain star formations create. So it's all one beautiful dance of light. And that's why now, as you can see, this lock-in stage is happening. And it's within this new moon period that this is so important. And what's held within this cycle um, for where you are, you can look at your chart. You can even, what you can do is you can look at this day of the Sagittarius new moon, which is on the 18th of December. You can look at your chart in terms of your progress chart and how it looks on that day and just see um, what's very important, which planetary structures where, what's important for you, um, how you're being infused. And if you don't know how to do that, you can get the Galactic Signature course, or it's very easy. You can go to any free astro page, just enter your data, <clears throat> your date of birth, and the specific hour as well, because it denotes your ascendant, your rising sign. 
and then just use the type of the different charts they have and you can use the advanced chart system which will uh, produce the what's called um, the natal chart, progress chart, these different things, okay? So you can do that. But what's also important is because we're going to work with the new archetype of Saturn now in Capricorn, go to C, that's very important. So do the both, right? See where your um, 26 degrees of Sagittarius falls in your chart, your needle chart for you. Like I said, for me, that is Neptune, and that's where my galactic core is. That's the first thing to check off the list, check. <laughs> the next thing, go and see where your Saturn is. Go look at the house area and what's perhaps in that house as well. Um, sometimes it's um, different, um, what's it called, different relations. But for me, Saturn, I think it's in the 10th house. And the 10th house is the house of work and having a position in the world. So Saturn, it's responsibility. So for me, it denotes that I'm in a way I have a kind of like this, as you can see. My work relates to uh, something of the collective as well because it is a house of, of work and something you kind of contribute to the world. So then the, that's the second thing. Check, check for where your Saturn is because that is the house or the area of life that you will apply the Capricorn energy. You know, So for me, the Capricorn energy will be prominent in the, in the work area, which is my work in the world, which is the 10th house. The third thing you can do is check where you have Capricorn aspects. So for me, like I said, my moon is in Capricorn. It's the first house. And my moon is in the first house. It's also very close to the Sagittarius for me and my rising sign. So check for any of these things and meditate on it. See how that will inform you for times to come. Because again, the Capricorn archetype is about devotion, the natural law, which sometimes has its restrictions and um, certain boundaries we need to learn to have to develop an integrity that aligns with us but also in compassionate state to the other because the self and the other needs to become less rigid than it was on this planet for quite a while um, then it's time and karma and responsibility and transcendence that comes as a result of that so what i was shown is that those of you who've done the inner work and inner alignment that capricorn energy now will be less of a climb it will be more about sharing your wisdom now in perhaps more tangible way than you have before because I know a lot of beautiful people now they have been doing the inner work of aligning with the core of their mission but perhaps they haven't gone out in the world they haven't applied the wisdom in such a way that they could and I know it's kind of in many ways we think well we have it perfectly as it is now but we're always expanding so the time when Saturn was in, in Sagittarius was the time of our maximum expansion in this cycle right but in terms of the collective Capricorn will be about the wisdom to apply this expansion because you can be as expanded as you can within but if you don't know how to apply this and apply this in the physical sense in a tangible form in this world it will leave you kind of dry because you will feel like my highest mission I don't know how to put it in the world I don't know how to share it especially if it's in a prominent position that are houses that go beyond the personal houses which is the ninth house the 10th the 11th and the 12th these are more transpersonal um, houses so if you have your Saturn in any of these houses you will have an even more prominent role to play now with Saturn moving into Capricorn if it's something to do with more personal areas in your life or if your Capricorn is in a way also relating to the personal aspects which is more second house you know the first house is the house of self which is the base is the foundation of who you are and it's, if you have it as well as i do my moon in the first the identity the something you've played for a while or the role something that you were you know the self that you kind of projected and and emotionally experiences is in need of change and it's going to be a natural change if you let it go if you allow it to occur um, but then we have the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. These are more personal area houses. And the seventh is the partnership. The eighth is kind of like the merging point, the union. And the ninth is more where these um, more higher spiritual path of sharing your your life with the grand, more grander theater than just, you know, playing the role for yourself. Um, so that's what I'm being shown is that this is such an important time right now. And it's not an important time to, you know, go out and about, do this and that. It's really important to align with what is coming through at this time. And if you are guided, please go to the last year in December when I shared a, um, I think it's called the creation principle behind the solstice. 
because I read you the automatic channeling about what the solstice truly means and how we are to uh, respond and channel energy at that time. And what's the difference between the winter solstice and the summer solstice? Because there's a huge difference. And when we're kind of culminating in that energy infusion and what we receive from being informed um, and what we're meant to kind of put out and spread and expand in that kind of um, kind of way. So um, what's important right now is to know that everything is connected. And if you want to learn more, I've recommended three courses for you, the Galactic Consciousness and Galactic Signature course. And um, I think I've also mentioned the Tantrica Life First Master, which is one of the most important courses I ever made. Because if you don't know how to align through this complete life or surrender to this process, you're still going to experience what the majority of the humans, human bodies are meant to experience, which is, you know, informing ourselves through this will aspect, which is not the divine will, which is not that surrender mode, but it's this constant drive. It's this constant need for achievement. Um, the transpersonal achievement is not about achievement at all, because remember, when you become aware that you're a part of this, that this is already in control of everything, that you don't need to be in such a way that you think you do, um, you become a part of this, because you melt with this essence, you become a vortex for this highest alignment, which is complete life force existence. And it's almost like if your hand wants to go right, it will go right. It's not like, no, please go left. Um, it's that non-forced creation. And this is what I feel this will be about, this wisdom of Capricorn and how to live this inner union, which Jupiter now is implying through moving um, through Scorpio, right? This will give us so much. I think this will be one of the most important stages for where we've moved so far in our development. Um, because also Saturn rules Capricorn, so it's coming in its natural position. Um, so for those of you who've done the work, you've done the inner alignment, um, it's going to be more about progression, your progression in the world, your um, eminence or your magnificence and how you can experience it, but not through achievement. Like I need to be famous if I want to do light work this way, or I need to have an audience of this and that amount. It's not about that. It's more the footsteps or the, the fingerprints that you're leaving through that which matters the most. And this only the infusion through life force knows because it always leads you naturally to that which is already holding the highest potential for you in each moment. So I hope that was helpful for you. Like I said, I won't be doing so many videos in December because I myself will be um, kind of like taking the advice of this and being in this internal infusion process. And the more changes I will apply will come in January with the new way of doing readings, uh, galactic readings and so forth. And if you want to do a session with me, if you want to have a reading, uh, I won't be doing them from the holiday period on. So if you kind of feel in inclined, do them now because from the holiday period until the New Year's, I won't be doing them. That. I'm gonna have a real 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 live break so that's it if you want to keep up I do um, kind of knit bits pieces of here and there of readings on Instagram so just go to my Instagram page to stay updated because I'm always posting there and the rest is also on my Facebook page and my blog diary of an ascension pioneer if you want to in a way contribute to these courses and me expanding uh, you know, the whole through this consciousness that I'm here to share. You can support my work by either becoming a patron on my Patreon channel, all the links are down below, or just visiting my page set up in a light. So thank you so much. I'm wishing you this beautiful uh, informational time because it's truly intense and it's like our cosmic self is really willing to come at this forefront now. It's kind of like, you know, that, 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 that itch you have from within is like, oh, something is a need and change. But that need is not your ego will wanting to change something out of a need. It's because you naturally are becoming aware that something is changing because you're already being informed that change is taking place. So the only thing that's different is that your consciousness is now aware of this. While before the will aspect was always wanting to come to the forefront and want to do it for you instead of knowing that this, this already has everything covered when you learn to live the surrender consciousness. Um, and it's not passive. It's really deeply co-creative through life force. So that's it for this video. Um, what else? Is there anything else? Yes, my cosmic self light activation is also available on my light activations page where you can explore this inner merge, your alchemical union that are recorded and channeled. So thank you so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful time. As always, so much love, wisdom, and power. Take care. Bye-bye. Lots of love.
magical.